Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Every once in a while, someone comes along who completely changes the way that we think about things. Whether it is Sir Isaac Newton who explained to us exactly why an apple falls straight down from the tree. Or Alexander Fleming demonstrating how penicillin can fight infection. Steve Jobs changing and rearranging the way that we uh, think about communicating with one another and sharing information with each other. Every generation or so, there's somebody who takes what the way that people think and completely flips it upside down. That's true on a global scale, you know, uh, historically speaking, on a large scale. It's also true on a personal scale. You probably know someone in your life like that, like uh, maybe it was a, a coach who taught you a lot of life lessons, or a friend who maybe challenged the way that you thought about things and, and changed it just a little bit, maybe an author or a speaker that really opened up the world to you in a way that you didn't see it before. There have been lots of people who have flipped our thinking upside down and Today, since you're on the inside of a church this morning, you can probably guess that I'm going to suggest Jesus should be on that list as well. Now, of course he is. On, historically speaking, on a global scale, his teachings really changed the world in a lot of different ways, but also on a personal scale. He changed the lives of the individuals who heard him speak in person, and he has also changed the lives and hearts of you and me. His teaching continues to do that, to challenge the way that we think and to maybe even turn the way that we think upside down. The Apostle Paul, for example, in the lesson that I read just a, a few minutes ago, said that not many of you were wise by human standards, not many were influential, not many were of noble birth, but God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. You see in Christ's kingdom, what seems like foolishness to most people is actually wisdom. What seems like weakness to most people, God says that's actually your strength. He takes the way that we think about things and he changes them, he flips them upside down. And today we're going to hear a portion of uh, perhaps Jesus' most famous sermon. It's commonly referred to as the Sermon on the Mount, the the sermon was so powerful and so perspective-changing that at the end of it, we're told the people were amazed who heard him. That they had never heard anyone teach like this, that he taught with authority and not like the teachers of the law that they were used to hearing. It totally changed things for them. And we're going to talk about this sermon for the next four weeks, but today we're just focusing on this first part. And immediately, we see that Jesus is going to cha change and challenge the way that we think about things, especially when it comes to what it means to have a fulfilling life or to have what some would call the blessed life. I think we all have an idea in our minds about what it means to be blessed or to have the blessed life. For lots of people, they're going to go immediately to materialistic things like having a nice house and a nice car, having nice vacations, things going well for them, that's the blessed life. But I think most of us would agree that that's kind of a superficial way to look at it because we know lots of people who have all of those things and yet are living pretty miserable lives. And at the same time, we also know people who don't have that much and yet live very fulfilled lives. So that can't quite be what Jesus means when he talks about the blessed life. So for some of us, we're going to think more about uh, relationships. As, as long as I have my health, 
and my family around me, that's the blessed life. And certainly that's a little bit closer, but, but if that's what the blessed life is like, then does that mean that people who are sick or unhealthy, people who are experiencing loneliness or abandonment, that they can't have a fulfilled life? It's a little better, but it's not quite what Jesus has in mind when he talks about being blessed. I mean, surely those things are blessings from the Father, but today Jesus is saying that you can have a blessed life even if counting your blessings is difficult, even if you try your hardest and you can't get past three. Jesus says your life is still blessed. 